Hey everyone, Britt and Chris Carmichael here bringing you the Elevated Life series where we teach you simple mindset shifts to create radical transformation in your life. Today's topic is how to beat procrastination. So if you're someone who struggles with going after even small goals, then these tips are gonna help you to beat procrastination. Yeah, the, the big deal here is procrastination is super, super different than laziness. I think a lot of people get them confused. Laziness means that, nah, I don't really wanna do anything. I'm not into that, I don't wanna do it. Procrastination means you know what you need to do, but you're choosing to do something else. So that's the difference between laziness and procrastination. So we really want to tease out what are the ways that can help you to beat the procrastination part. Oh, if you're procrastinating with something, awareness is the key to make the change. So I want you to just take a minute to think about all the to-dos running through your mind like over right now. Over the last now. whole year, big <laughs> projects. What projects are you doing? Yeah, what are some of those to-dos that you're like, oh, it's still on my mind, I still have to do it, but I, I'm dragging my feet and I, I, I know I could have started sooner. What is that one thing or maybe a couple things for you? Leave it in the comments below. Let us know what that thing is that you're procrastinating on because when we share these tips, you might begin to look at that particular project in a new light and become so motivated to go after it. Yeah, so the number one tip that we have for you is to commit to one thing. The number one reason why people procrastinate is because they're overwhelmed. They literally just have too much stuff on their plate. So when they look at it, especially if you make a to-do list, remember you write it down on paper, nothing's organized, so you don't know which task has a higher priority. So when you're writing things down, make sure you know what's the big mover in your life. If I worked on just this one thing, this would move the needle forward so much more than if I just worked on all these other crappy tasks but that are written on the same list. Chris taught me a really, really powerful tool for squashing procrastination. He taught me that if it takes less than two minutes to do, do it right now. Because how many times do we think of all these little things throughout the day, oh, I need to do this and I need to do that, and it just builds and piles when you could have just stopped right then and committed to that action. So the second tip is to do small actions. Small actions lead to big rewards because it builds consistency. Yeah, and this is called, this really has to do with what's called the Ziegernick effect in psychology. And what that means is that all of those tasks that you haven't finished stay in your memory, they stay stuck. So what ends up happening is as you leave the task, as you go to do anything else, you go have lunch with your friends, you're on the phone, you still stay thinking about them. The problem is thinking about tasks and doing tasks and completing them is very different. So you get that, you need to get out of that loop. So the way to get out of that loop is always through action. And so if, if it's gonna take you two minutes or if it's gonna take you five minutes, just start, just do the smallest actionable step that you can do to get you toward whatever it is that you're working on. That way your mind goes, ooh, I've done something today, and then tomorrow you can do something then again, and then over time, you've gone through the entire deal. And so it, it's such an easier way to say, ooh, this won't take me long, I'm just gonna do it now. So what is one small action that you can commit to today, right now, that you can feel so accomplished checking off that box? I know so many of you overachievers love to check boxes. So what could you do? What's one small action step that you could take today that would move you forward towards your dreams? Yeah, the third big tip that we have for you, and this is all backed by studies, is the fact that you have to forgive yourself. The more often that you can forgive yourself about things that you've procrastinated on in the past, the more likelihood that you will to take action on the task that you know you need to do now. I mean, that's huge. So let's just take a moment and let's forgive ourselves. Take a big deep breath in. As you let it out, notice if you can just forgive yourself. Just say, hey, I didn't do those things in the past, but today I'm gonna do that two minute, that five minute rule and just get moving, just get started. You don't have to complete the whole thing. Too many people think that I have to do everything all at once and I have to complete this whole long list and this long plan, but really you just have to get started. You just have to start getting into the game. Yeah, it's like baking a cake. You can't do it all at once. You have to just follow steps and that's the same with going after your dreams or even living your life is a step-by-step process and you can't do it all at once so if you have some changes you want to make don't try to overwhelm yourself because that's when procrastination kicks in it's like oh I've got way too much shit to do and so, you don't do anything so you don't you take do, a nap yeah <laughs> so you Netflix and chill and so it's really important for you to break it all down into tiny small steps and then you're creative and smart enough to know which one goes first right so you take the next step and maybe you get a couple steps out of order that's fine the, the whole point is, is stop trying to take the last step when you haven't even started with the first 
first one. Yeah, and the biggest thing that I've noticed is the fact that the people who procrastinate the most, the biggest procrastinators, are perfectionists. There are people who think, if I don't do this perfectly, then it won't work. But if you've noticed anything about life, anything, is that things are always changing. We're always improving stuff. And so it's super important for you to get to a place to realize, let's make the first sucky thing, and then let's make it better after that. I mean, you remember how TVs used to look? You had the TVs in a big box. You had to, it, was, it was weird. You only had a couple channels. Now the TVs are the huge flat screen. We've improved, and everything continuously is improving. So you have to realize that perfection. Perfectionism doesn't work because you never have a finished product. Get the smallest viable thing that you can get out and accomplish and finish and then improve it from there. Because that's how you know. You'll test it. People will give you feedback. They say, hey, this sucks. You got to go back to work on this. You go, oh, well, I'm so glad I found that out. Now I can work on the real thing. The fourth tip to beat procrastination is to get help. We don't mean psychiatric help, but accountability partners. If you just ha I have, I have a text message going with a group of my girlfriends and it's called girl gang. And every time we're going after a goal or we're setting a task up for ourselves, we share that with the group. That way we know that at the end of the day, we can go back to the group and, and, and feel good about going after our dreams. Instead of not telling anyone that you want to eat healthier, you never put it out there. And guess what? You just keep snacking and eating like crap but if you put it out there and you say hey hey friends hey lover hey mom like whoever you need like even your dog could be your accountability partner you just have to speak it out loud you have to put it out there and put the intention out there and that really helps to drive the momentum and motivation towards going after your dream so get help from others do not be afraid to ask we cannot do this all on our own I mean hello has anyone seen Oprah's Empire it's not just her there's a huge team that supports just her just Oprah in one room doing all the stuff yeah. <laughs> I know right so you have your zone of genius Genius. and there are other people who have theirs so reach out connect with them that's exactly why Chris and I show up here on the elevated life every Friday to teach you guys the tr the trainings and the wisdom and all of the things that we've uncovered during our lifetimes <laughs> So we love to empower you and educate you. So surround yourself with wise mentors and teachers and like-minded souls who get you and will support you and lift you up. Because when you put it out there, you're so much more likely to go after it when you have that support and accountability from someone else. Yeah, and the other part about getting help from others besides accountability is to realize that your talents aren't everywhere. You know, you're not a 10 out of 10 in every category. There's a lot of things that I just suck at doing. And so I get other people who are good at them, who are passionate about them. You know, organization's not my thing. Luckily, I married a person who loves to organize things and that helps a ton. So the reality is to look back and remember when we were in school, it was you taking the test. It was you doing the, doing the reading. It was you doing the homework. So we're so about, it's just, can be, it's just us. It's just us. I have to do everything myself. It wasn't me doing the homework. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's true. As you, as you get older, as you get into a business, as you start thinking about life, it's so important to enlist others. There's so many people out there who want to help you. You know, maybe it's the housekeeper that you need. Maybe it's someone to, to deliver your meals. You know, now we've got Uber Eats and stuff like that. People, there's so much that we can offload. When you're looking at your task list, you really need to decide, are these tasks really that important? And am I the person that really needs to be doing them? If you can offload some stuff, guess what that does to your mental clarity? You don't have so many things cluttering it up and you can realize, wow, I really need to be spending my time doing this creative effort here that really aligns with my talents, that really aligns with my passion, so I'm not stuck doing the menial things that never really, it's playing busy. What so many of us do, we want to be in business, we want to be in a relationship, but we play busy doing the things that don't matter. So whatever those things are for you, either cross them off your list, eliminate them, them entirely, mm -hmm. or delegate them. Yeah. Find somebody who wants to do those things and let them do them. Don't do everything yourself. It's silly. <laughs> yes, and if you want extra added support and accountability, just reach out with your questions. We love answering anything you bring to us here on the Elevated Life series and over in our Elevated Life membership club. Thank you so much for tuning in on these four ways to beat procrastination. And I want to know what stood out to you. Is there one small action step that you can take right now that will move you closer towards the dreams that you have for yourself? What is that one one small step. Leave that in the comments below and let us know how we can hold you accountable for going after your dreams and stopping procrastination. Yes, and whatever that one small step is, just do it. Yeah. Just start. Even if it's bad, even if you don't know what you're doing, even if you don't really know how to do it, just start. You'll learn so much more along the way rather than thinking, well, I'll wait till it's perfect and then we'll get started. 
because it will never ever happen. It's all about action, Jackson. So take some action, just like we've said before. Three, two, one, just go. Go after your dreams and take one small step so you'll thank yourself in the future. We'll catch you guys next week for the Elevated Life series at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time here on our Facebook and Instagram. Yay! <laughs> Have guys. a good weekend.